Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and these are the ties that bind. Today, we are looking at an issue that is real close to us right here at home. And that is, we are visiting with Poha Ryan, and she is a candidate for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Aloha, Poha. Good morning, aloha. Poha is a keikioka aina, mm -hmm. a mother, a grandmother, an experienced nonprofit administrator, former state senate, and now she is running for trustee at large for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And what it says in her literature is to bring effective stewardship of the trust of the trust to enhance economic empowerment, home ownership, and educational opportunities for Hawaiians. Wow, that's a mouthful. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for inviting me. As you know, as my audience knows, I only ask very dear friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Poha, I have known for, I, I don't know how many years, but she was a young whippersnapper <laughs> um, from Molokai. And her mother was the strongest Democrat I've ever met. And Poha came to work for Brickwood Gullitariat when he was chair of the Democratic Party. And there's this young thing learning. So you went on from working for Brickwood to being a senator of your own, and then you were uh, with this non tourism, Hawaiian yes. tourism. What is, what is Hawaiian tourism? Uh, the Native Hawaiian Hospitality Association was my um, last immediate position as the executive director. Uh, it was created in 1997 by Dr. George Kanahele and Kenneth Brown. Mm -hmm. In conjunction with actually the process it took to create Hawaii Tourism Authority, it went hand in hand. Um, basically, that nonprofit provided, was meant to be the cultural conscience of tourism. Oh, and that's needed. Yes. It's, it is so needed. Yes. And it will never be stagnant. Yes. It is always an active. Um, what, it's, as a consciousness, Hawaiian consciousness of tourism, we see so much of this tin can and whatnot. Tell us about the consciousness, Hawaiian mm -hmm. consciousness of tourism. What, what exactly is that? Well, whole kipa or hospitality is an innate value in the culture. Um, but today is a very different time for visitors all over the world. It's actually the trend right now that travelers want to be part of the indigenous community wherever they go, whatever destination that is. So we're actually in a good time. Hawaiians are in a good time to um, try and learn more about tourism and be involved. It is the number one industry in our state. It is. I think that we need to benefit more. Um, and also it's about framing our own narrative and the authentic representation, wh whatever that may be. Um, Part of it too is it, it, it's a very, um, it's a double-edged sword because as much as we want prosperity through tourism, we also have to take care of Malama, the island, the environment. Yes. For lack of a better word, um, tourism still, tourists still come to Hawaii for that purpose. Beautiful beaches, beautiful scenery, and it should go hand in hand with the cultural values. So I think it's a really good time for people who are interested in the Hawaiian community to participate in tourism. I, I wonder when you look at Waikiki, and it is so not Hawaiian, yeah. you know, all those high-end stores, mm -hmm. what happened? Where did we lose mm -hmm. what Waikiki? Uh, maybe you're too young mm -hmm. to remember what Waikiki used to be. But um, with now all of those high-end stores and there's nothing that says this is Hawaii. Well, one of the things I did, was able to do in my previous job was a lot of research. And Waikiki was filled with residents, actually. Mm -hmm. And the Ali'i had their own residents as well prior to that. Um, Princess Ka'iulani in Ainahau and uh, 
Queen Liu Kalani and Pao Kalani. Right. Um, it was the playground of the, mm -hmm. and we all can see why. It's, it such is. A, it's really a beautiful beach. It is. And that is why people come to Waikiki. Mm -hmm. Um, it is very uh, dense, um, high rises, but there is a trend in blending the contemporary with the Hawaiian um, design values, and um, mo'olelo seems to be very important to a lot of the resort um, management right now. Um, recently, Prince, the Prince Hotel in Waikiki re, um, reconstructed and did a lot of renovation but they based it on the story of the storied place of that property, and it's quite beautiful. The end product is very beautiful. And that seems to be the consciousness of where a lot of the hotels want to go, actually coming back to making it more Hawaiian, or else you're just staying in another luxury hotel around the world with pretty beaches. So it is an effort, um, and realistically, it's quite a modern city, obviously, and it's a very iconic city, Waikiki. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of history, though. Um, Native Hawaiian Hospitality Association contributed to the storyboards that you see all over Waikiki. That was one of the projects they did previously. And the reason is because to, um, to note the historic marks, marking of the different places in Waikiki, but also to inform not only um, tourists but residents as well. Well, now tell us why you are a candidate mm -hmm. for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And for anybody that doesn't know what the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, tell us basically what is the Office of Hawaiian Affairs? Well, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs was created through, actually, um, it's part of the State of Hawaii Constitution, Article 12, Section 5, that creates a body that will, um, that empowers nine trustees to oversee the trust assets in holding for the Hawaiian people and also to work to better the conditions of Hawaiians. So the role is fiduciary, unlike um, my previous position as a state senator. We don't make laws. We don't do state um, policy or administrative rules. It's a fiduciary role. Um, and it's a very different campaign, I must say. I don't feel stressed about it. It feels very comfortable, very natural, very purposeful. Okay, so as a trustee, what, what is the job mm -hmm. of the trustee? Um, the trustees... You say there's nine. Yes. So. The trustees oversee the CEO, who is charged with um, the administration of the institution itself. Um, the trustees decide... One of the primary roles is really to grow the trust assets. Um, one of the things I hope that we will refocus on, should I get into the position, I really want to focus on that. That's one of the things I want to do because we've gone too far away from that. Is, is that what the um, audit was about? And the audit and the LLCs, was that about going too far? Well, or, my understanding of the I, audits, I, yeah. it, I, unless I um, know the motivation behind the persons or per person that requested the audit, I can't really say. Um, motivation does matter when you do audit because mm -hmm. it depends what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, in a government uh, audit, though, it normally is for um, uh, audit is done to improve the agency and to make it better. Mm -hmm. um, I can say that this is not the first audit where um, WUHA has had negative commenting. And not to say other state agencies as well have had audits that did not fare well. <laughs> yeah. Um, that seems to be the case with all audits. It's yes. like no, no audit ever comes back and said, hey, you did a good job. Because it's meant to correct and improve, yeah. So hopefully, um, we, we don't know where the, um, where the facts will take us, if there is wrongdoing. That I cannot say personally. What I have found, though, since I decided to run for OHA is in my research is that there is a big need for um, correction of uh, systems and processes 
that's a major thing that needs to be um, addressed. That's where I'm seeing a lot of the um, confusion maybe coming from. Um, it needs to be tightened up. Um, going out into the public as I campaign, uh, I'm hearing a lot of we just want to see fairness of access to um, benefits, whether they're grants or um, contracts, but also transparency is huge uh -huh. with our public. When um, now you are running for the office, mm -hmm. and the election will be at the same time as all at the primaries. Yes. Yes. And um, so, how many people are running for the same office? Yeah, it, it is interesting. In 2000, the court, um, Cayetano versus Rice, ruling ruled that all of Hawaii voters can vote for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, which wasn't the case right when it first beginning. started. Yes. Um, Ms. Freddie Rice did bring the case forward and was um, successful. Um, as a senator, I actually voted for the law to be changed requiring not, um, OHA to have a primary. I will say one of the trustees was not happy with me, <laughs> and she uh, expressed that. But I felt that um, it was another way to give more opportunity to those others who want to serve our, our community. And it's ironic that um, I am will, will be in a um, primary. The law stands that with the three candidate seats that are open this election cycle, the three at-large seats, seven or more candidates, there's an automatic primary, which we find ourselves, I believe. I think there's 17 candidates. 17? Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. That's good and bad. It depends how you look at the numbers. But um, I believe everybody should earn their votes anyway. It is very hard work. It is hard. It um, is. One of the things I find very interesting is that every trustee seat is a statewide seat. So in other words, all the voters of Hawaii vote for every seat in the Board of Trustees, which I find interesting since we don't do that in the legislature. Well, I was going to say, when you're at large, does that mean all of the islands? No, but uh, it does, but all the trustees. All of the trustees. It doesn't matter if they represent Oahu or um, Kauai. I recall when my mother decided to run for OHA back in the day, she um, won Molokai, but it was the first election where it was uh, statewide, Why? and she ended up losing a seat. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, but in the at large, we do represent the entire state. But it's not broken we, down. But can everybody vote? Yes, at everybody. Large? I want to emphasize that. At I large, really, everything, every yeah. trustee seat, everybody can vote for it. Not just the at large seats. And I really um, want to emphasize and encourage people to vote. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be Hawaiian, but we need your help. If change is needed, then help us bring it. Okay, uh, we need to take a break. And when we come back, let's talk about the, the infrastructure of OHA and what it means when, why the rest of us need to be involved, okay? Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on ThinkTech's Likeable Science Show. Every Friday at 2 p.m., we delve in the magical, magical, fascinating world of science. How science applies to your life, why you should care about science, what impact science has on you and on those around you, why you need to know some science. It's a fun, interesting, painless way to learn some good science that you can use. See you there. Hello, I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair. I have a show called Finding Respect in the Chaos. It's all about women's rights and gender equality. It's a place for survivors of abuse to come on and tell their stories, and a place for advocates to come on and share important resources so that people can get past the abuse and into the hope and healing that's on the other side. I hope you'll join me every other Friday at 3 o'clock for Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. And we're back. And we are visiting with my dear friend, Pohai Ryan. And Pohai is running for, as a candidate, for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And we were just talking about voting, and she has to 
every island. I mean, mm -hmm. other than governor, does anybody? No, which I, well, lieutenant governor, which I, yeah, or um, federal seats, but which I find quite uh, interesting. Um, I really need to look into that more because I will say the resources are high. Um, the expending, um, you have to be careful. You have to have networks. Mm -hmm. Or else, it's really difficult to get your name out there. Yeah, I but would I think so. But I feel it's important to, that me personally to go to the neighbor islands because as someone who grew up on a neighbor island, I know how much it means to people that um, you're you're present, Presence. you come and you care. Yes, I think so. Um, and so often we here in Honolulu are Honolulu Oahu is, is right here. <laughs> it say. only happens right here. Yes. If, and we don't even yes. now of course with the volcano we we get to mm -hmm. see on a daily basis and we get to feel and see oh the people out there yeah yeah so tell me now you mentioned term limits yes are there no term limits i mean can a no. person just take a seat and stay for the rest of their lives if they continue to get elected yes um i personally feel that three, four-year terms should be adequate. Um, that is enough time to perform as a fiduciary for the Hawaiian community. So I am actually in support of term limits for trustees. Um, but it's not something that can be easily done. Um, it would take a referendum or, um, or even a court order, mm -hmm. but we will have to see. But you know, most people think all politicians today need term limits. So <laughs> yes, I don't know what that would mean. But but do people outside of the Hawaiian community pay attention to OHA? Well, I found that people were uh, being very respectful and courteous. They felt it wasn't their place to vote, and I actually am appreciative of that. But uh, we do need the help of the broader community in this election if change is what people want. Um, also, there are tax um, payers' money that is expended mm -hmm. for the operations of OHA, and I feel that um, they should have a say. Well, you know, we um, get to hear all of the bad stuff, mm. obviously. Those are the, you know, that make headlines. But do we really understand and get to see and know about all of the good stuff? Because I know yeah. that they can, couldn't stay in business this long yeah. if, if they had not, they weren't producing some good. Yeah, there are some success stories, especially among um, business clients and um, programming, um, successful partnerships, extensive research and data that is needed for other entities outside of OHA mm -hmm. to um, support and assist um, programs or projects for uh, the Hawaiian community. I think that it's just very easy to, and quite dramatic, to report on negative things. Yes. But um, we laugh about it among the community because Hawaiians are dramatic. That's who we are. Mm -hmm. Very fiery sometimes. Um, I don't think you should serve as a trustee if you don't have passion to serve our people. You should have passion. It cannot be all logic. Yes, of course. Now, I remember many years ago, I was one of the stewards uh, at Waimea Valley, and then OHA bought the valley. And an, I think there was an LLC yes. set up to yeah. buy the valley. Uh, and then we didn't hear anything else about OHA mm -hmm. and the valley, so. Well, I, I, because I'm familiar with the current um, valley operations, I do want to actually commend Richard Pizzullo, mm -hmm. who was um, in charge of Waimea Valley. Yeah. He's finally bought it into the black with his team and his staff out there. Um, and it's a very vibrant um, destination mm -hmm. for people to visit, but also a community gathering place um, Hi'ili Aloha does, um, it is part of Hi'ili Aloha, and I understand there is some concern going on with Hi'ili Aloha, which I am not privileged to oh, really yeah. um, comment on, only because I don't have enough information mostly. But um, from what I've seen, the success of Waimea Valley, it's changed it to a, the cultural place it should be. 
and it's quite beautiful and active. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, because we worked hard many, many years yeah. ago to make to take it from being a circus. Yeah, yeah. And into, yeah. you know, back to what it should have been. Should it's be. quite a spiritual point. Yes. And maybe the stewards now are the appropriate stewards. Yes. That might be why. Mm -hmm. But if I can say just where it was headed mm -hmm. when yes. we came on board. Yes, I remember. It was like Ferris wheels Changing. and oh, yes. anyway, that was a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. And so how would you, let's go back to today, mm -hmm. and you say that, uh, let me read it to, to of the trust, mm -hmm. to stewardship of the mm -hmm. trust. What did you mean by stewardship of the trust? Well, it is the primary duty of the trustees to oversee um, the trust assets, uh, whether they be real estate, programs, funding. Um, I think that one of the first things I would do as a new trustee is really understand the reporting structure um, as afforded by the trustee, board of trustee meeting agendas. I think there could be some improvement in that way. Because sometimes mistakes are made uh, without knowing it's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Or there's not enough information without you knowing you're supposed to ask something. I think it's important that the trustees be briefed thoroughly before the agenda so they understand what is before them and what should be asked. Um, I think that the uh, financial accounting of the um, per, the trustees uh, allowances need to be revamped. I'm, I'm very adamant about that. I think it should be consistent and in line with the legislative rules mm -hmm. uh, because they're all based on ethics rules and I think it's appropriate. Um, and that doesn't mean they won't be able to use it to further their position, attend conferences. It actually just means that the parameters are clear. And what about the Mr. Crab? What is his mm -hmm. job? Um, Kamana'o Pono Crab is the CEO of um, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and he directly reports to the Board of Trustees. So he's like a manager? Is that He's it? much higher than that. He is... Um, I know the community sees him in different lights. Um, I've seen him viewed as uh, the keeper, the guider, the navigator mm -hmm. of the delivery of services, the um, outcomes that people want to see. He is um, a very um, great pr practitioner, cultural practitioner, and olelo Hawaii, meaning Hawaiian right. language speaker. Um, but management, he does report to the board directly. It is in statute, and that is how it's structured. Um, is, now, is he elected or? No, he, he is hired by the hired board. By yes, the board. He's the only employee hired by the board. Uh -huh. Yes. There is a um, process where people can apply when it is open. So does he have a, is there a term limit with him? Oh, no. No. So no, there's no term limit. When his contract is reviewed, is it's, oh, he it's has either a, he up has or a con down. Contract. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so that if the turnover, mm -hmm. let's assume that mm -hmm. there's a turnover. New trustees. New trustees. Does that do anything with his contract? Um, it's my understanding that it's being reviewed right now. I could be incorrect, but that is my understanding. So that probably will be settled before the election is completed. Mm -hmm. If not, it is one of the new duties of the um, new sitting trustees, if there will be some. But uh, I cannot say whether he will be terminated or not. Oh, well, no, no, yeah. I didn't. I'm just Or changed, the, or if it will be changed. I, I'm just looking at the structure of Yes. Not because yes. I don't know the gentleman, so I, yeah, I don't yeah. want to comment. Yeah, 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 and that's appropriate. Um, but it is a process where the trustees review um, his evaluation, I guess. They are the only body that can say he can stay or not. Uh -huh. Now, the rest of the employees, mm -hmm. each trustee mm -hmm. has an office staff. Yes. So how are they hired? 
um, normally they're hired somewhat uh, under the direction of the trustees and that's obvious because you're so that's it's a your small office staff, staff. Yeah, yeah yeah it's mm -hmm. like the legislature in that way where um, you you know as a trustee what you want in your staff people and it varies mm -hmm. so the, the, the then you get the trustee gets to hire staff recommend the hire yes, yes. okay so he's the CEO, mm -hmm. but the trustees get to hire their staff. Their own staff. Their own staff. The rest of the institution staff, though, is hired through the process of human resources. So there is an office of, of, of... Yes, mm -hmm. they have their own human resource division, as well as um, leadership body. Um, within each division, I think, is how they structure it for the hires, the recommendations. So this is a big operation. It is, it is. What is the budget, annual budget? Do you know? I cannot say for sure. I did go through the financials. Um, I cannot see what the operating funds are off of my head. But um, I know that some people were concerned about some of the salaries. But really, if, if the Office of Hawaiian Affairs is working towards the direction of a governance body, we need to pay appropriately. Mm -hmm. Um, PhDs do get paid higher, MBAs do get paid higher, yes. paid higher. Um, and we cannot expect high quality um, staff without the pay being in parity to the private sector. Now, do uh, they are paid commensurate with any From other? From what I've seen, yes. yes. It's pretty much in par. Mm -hmm. um, I have not been able to actually access how the staff is structured and I'm sure once elected I'll be able to access yeah. that as something that needs to be reviewed tell me where does the where do you, the money that mm -hmm. that the state or trust monies mm -hmm. come from from the state where what are the lands where are the well one of the one of the bone of contentions with the office of Hawaiian affairs is the lack of revenue that is due yes. to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And it is something that, um, as trustees, we are responsible to keep pursuing to collect it. So um, where does that money, what, where are those lands? Um, they're throughout the state, actually. And this session, legislative session, prior to this session, was the first time I saw the Office of Hawaiian Affairs do a basically a very focused marketing effort to educate the community about the ceded lands um, and, and the trust itself. And I felt the film was quite successful, but it's the follow-up part in working with the legislature, obviously, is where the challenge comes in. And it's something we have to continue to work on because it is our fiduciary responsibility. So the, the legislature works with OHA? Um, in that respect, because the state is the basically the lessee mm -hmm. that owes the lease lands yeah. or payments, whether it be um, for uh, so um, revenue generating. Yeah. So if you're uh, supposed to get money from, let's say, the land, mm -hmm. the land that the airport is on. Yes. Does do they have to? report, do they have to generate a report that says X number of dollars? You're speaking about, uh, are you speaking about um, the state? Is that who you're referencing? Um, um, do they, these, where these ceded lands are? Yes, there is, does, there is a revenue formula that's supposed to be um, followed. And that is what um, OHA's position is that we are not receiving the right revenue due okay. to us. Now we have to go. Oh, okay. But I'll give you 30 seconds to tell us why we need to vote for you. Well, you know, since I was a young girl, I wanted to run for OHA. Um, I was actually discouraged and asked to serve the greater community first, which I have. I think this point in my life, I feel very comfortable and purposeful in this run. I ask that um, with my experience in the community, that people see the value in me sitting as a trustee, a new trustee. Um, the time right now, I think, is a good one. Change is okay. It's not necessarily um, targeted at any one person or group of people, but change is 
time is now. Okay. Well, thank you so much, my dear. And you will come back and talk to us again. Yes. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you. Aloha. <laughs>